And now stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. For extra driving pleasure, the signal to look for is the yellow and black circle sign that identifies signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And for Sunday evening listening pleasure, the signal to listen for is this whistle that identifies the signal oil program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whistler's strange story, Front Man. The dangers involved in his weekly visits to the small cottage at West Beach were great. Oh, yes, Steve Conant was well aware of that. He was well aware of the fact, too, that his reputation was at stake. The spotless reputation of Steve Conant, prominent attorney at law. And he wondered if the girl who stood with him now on the darkened porch of the cottage, the girl he held in his arms, was worth the risk. You really have to go back to town, darling. You know I do. All right. Take care of yourself, Counselor. For me. Sure I will. So long, Red. Steve Conan hurried down the path to his car. He looked back once and waved to the girl on the porch and then drove off into the night. An hour later, the lights of the city came into view as the highway crossed the Black Mountain Bridge. And then, as he reached the city limits, glancing into the rearview mirror, he saw the police car approaching. Then it was alongside, and he pulled over to the curb. What's the trouble, officer? I thought I recognized you, Mr. Conan. Oh? Well, uh, why... There's been a request to find you and ask you to come down to headquarters, Mr. Conan. What's up? It's your brother. He's been picked up in hell without bail. Johnny? What's the charge? Suspicion of murder. He wants to see you. What for? He knows I won't do anything. He says you're his alibi. Hi, Mr. Conant. He's in Lieutenant Haley's office. All right, Sergeant. Sorry you have to come down to headquarters at a time like this. That's all right. I understand. It's quite all right. Sure, sure, Lieutenant. Go ahead, Rayvon. So you think I killed Conant? Oh, Lieutenant. Yes, yes. What? Oh, oh, Mr. Conant. Come on in. Come in. Hiya, Stevie. How are you, Lieutenant? I'm sorry about this, Mr. Conant, but... Johnny here tells us... Yeah, I told him you were with me, Steve, all afternoon at my place. Buzz Tolman's been killed, Mr. Conan. We think Johnny did it. Now, I know he's your younger brother, but this is murder. Were you with him all afternoon? I haven't seen Johnny in a month. Well, Johnny... <laughs> Wait a minute. What's so funny? Ah, you are, Lieutenant. You are. I'm surprised you fell for my little gag. I just told you he was my alibi, so you'd bring him in here and fast. Oh, I... <laughs> Cute, huh? <laughs> I was afraid of that. Now, how about it, Stevie? Come on, get me out of this pillbox, huh? Sorry, Johnny. Get yourself another lawyer. What did you say? You heard me. I told you a long time ago we were washed up. I don't want to have anything to do with you and your dirty rackets. 
Why, you cheap shyster. You turned down your own brother? Half-brother, Johnny. You'd like to see me go up for murder, wouldn't you? You wouldn't lift a finger to Take help Get easy, tough guy. Okay, okay, Steve. Go on, on your way. I can get off this hook without you, but I'm not going to forget this, understand? Someday I'll do as much for you. Without a word, you turn, walk from the room. Johnny's voice, his threat still ringing in your ears. Lieutenant Haley walks along the corridor at your side, has an apologetic word, a friendly pat on the back to give you as you step out into the street. He understands, doesn't he, Steve? They all understand. As Stephen Conant, one of the most respected lawyers in the city, you can't afford to have your name linked with anything unsavory. You can't afford to have any connection with the racketeer, your half-brother, Johnny Conant. The following day, you scan the newspapers nervously. It's all there, isn't it? The killing of a rival racketeer, Buzz Tolman. Your half-brother, Johnny's arrest. And he's still being held without bail. But that night at your apartment, you have a visitor. Oh, Oh, Lieutenant Haley here. Uh, come on in. Oh, no, no, thanks, Mr. Conard. I, I just stopped by for a moment. I uh, I want to tell you about Johnny. Oh? Uh-huh. He's been released. I thought you'd like to know. Really? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, thanks. He came up with a very good alibi. A nice, tight alibi. We couldn't hold him. Oh, well, all right, Lieutenant. He's still pretty sore, Mr. Conard. Now, uh, if you want, I'll give you a couple of my boys who... No, see no, that, that, uh, that won't be necessary. Thanks just the same. Okay, whatever you say. A quarter of an hour after the lieutenant is gone, you hurry downstairs to your car, drive across town to a small apartment building. You ring the bell under the nameplate Edna Watkins. Then climb a flight of stairs to apartment 202. Oh. Hello, Steve. Hello, Edna. The uh, boyfriend around? Sure. Come on in. Here's the rest of the family, honey. Hi, you counselor. Yeah, Johnny boy. Anyone follow you? No. <laughs> Lieutenant offered to give me a couple of his boys for protection. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it down. <laughs> Ah, that was a great act we put on at headquarters, wasn't it, Steve? <laughs> ah, you should have seen it, baby. <laughs> a cheap shyster, I called him. <laughs> ah, they'll never connect us now, Stevie. How could they? A big shot lawyer like Steve here, mixed up with a dirty racketeer. Hey, now watch that, baby. What a front for little Johnny's bigger and better business. And watch us grow, baby. Bookmaking numbers, slot machines, punch board, protection. With Coleman out of the way, little Johnny takes over. The whole lucrative business will be coming over our desk, Steve. Yeah, yeah, sure, John. Only we got to be careful. And speaking of being careful, you uh, you sort of got your signals crossed up yesterday afternoon, didn't you, Steve? Now, what do you mean? You were supposed to be here in town. What were you doing up at West Beach? I... How'd you know I was at West Beach? Checking up on me? No, 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 no. One of the boys saw you heading that way. Well, I... I had business there. Well, okay. Only, only the next time, let me know, huh? Well, I got to run out for a while. Edna, how about a beer for Steve? Sure. Now, where are you going, Johnny? I got to see Lou about the payoff of that Coleman alibi. I won't be long. Won't be long. Keep our boy entertained, will you, Edna? Okay, Johnny. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? I've been wanting to talk to you about Lou. Can you trust him? Sure. Up to a point. But look... I don't really trust anybody in this outfit. That is, outside of you and Edna. The three of us are the only ones any of us can count on. (laughs) Well, I'll see you later. (laughs) You hear that, Edna? He trusts us. Here's your beer, Counselor. Mm, Thanks. Red. Once 
Once again, the cartoon on the signal gasoline billboards has inspired a Whistler fan to send in a limerick. This one is from Howard Ryan of Portland, who writes, There once was a husband who stayed out till two. His alibi, out of gas, was really true. His wife listened and then said that won't happen again. From now on, it's signal go farther gas for you. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far with no farther gasoline. Yeah, that was a smart little woman in tonight's limerick. She even used the famous Go Farther Gasoline as a way to smooth out her home problems. But in addition, her hubby will enjoy Signal's smoother going in his car. For along with its famous mileage, Signal Gasoline also delivers the kind of performance that makes driving more fun. Signal's flashing pickup and smooth power are the natural result of the more efficient performance that today's powerful Signal Gasoline helps your engine deliver. So, for great going this summer, take a tip from the drivers up and down the coast who have switched to Signal. Try Signal gasoline in your car and go farther. As Steve Conan, prominent attorney at law, you've been a perfect front for the activities of your half-brother Johnny Conan, the racketeer, haven't you, Steve? Yes, and so far, no one has suspected that this partnership exists. It's a dangerous partnership, isn't it, Steve? You shudder at the thought of what Johnny will do to you if he ever finds out about you and his sweetheart, Edna. You know how ruthless Johnny can be when something stands in his way. He'll get you. Just as he got rid of Buzz Tolman, the rival gang boss, with a bullet. In the past several weeks, you've tried to think of a way out. A way to dissolve this dangerous partnership. But it's no use. You're trapped. And then one night, a week after the Tolman killing, you're in your apartment. Hello? Hello, Constance. Oh, hello, Edna. I want to see you. Can you come over right away? Oh, uh, too risky, Edna. Never bothered you before, darling. Yeah, well, look, we can't take any chances. Johnny won't be around. Right now, he's hiding out in a little apartment over on 76th Street. Hiding out? What's happened? Suppose you come over, Counselor. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, and uh, you better use the back stairs. Just in case. <laughs> Here, Steve. I'll show you why Johnny's hiding out. Take a look out that window. Yeah. Who's he? That little gent in the doorway across the street is one of Tolman's boys, waiting for me to lead him to Johnny's hideout. <laughs> He'll have a tough time getting to Johnny with Sid and the rest of the boys around. Johnny's out there alone. Alone? Getting into the big time has made him a little jittery. He won't even trust his own boys anymore. We're the only ones who know where he is. Yeah, well... Look, Johnny can't go on hiding forever. Yeah, he won't. He figures to let the Tolman boys simmer a while, cool off. Then he'll make them an offer. He's pretty sure they'll take it. Well, I'm sure they will, too. Some of those boys have short memories when the dough looks good. Steve. Yeah? I've been thinking. Suppose I made it easy for that trigger man out there to find Johnny. What are you driving at? I let him follow me out to Johnny's hideout. No, Edna, no. You want Johnny out of the way, don't you? Not unlike that. Why should you split halves with anybody when you can run the whole set up yourself? But we'll never have to be afraid of Johnny finding out about yeah, it. Use your head, Edna, so Johnny gets it. The next thing you know, cops are swarming all over that apartment on 76th. They'll find the book. The book? Yeah, the, the deals, the payoffs in Johnny's little black book. Names, addresses, everything's there. And I'm dead. I'll get it for you. Edna, that book is the only thing that links me with Johnny. The only proof. I said I'd get it for you. Well. I'll... I'll have to think about it. Okay. In the meantime, how about fixing a drink?
Edna has hit on the solution, hasn't she, Steve? The way out you've been looking for. It will cost Johnny his life, but you'll have the black book. And that's more important than anything else. Yes, even more important than Edna. Without knowing it, she's solved another one of your problems, hasn't she, Steve? Something else that's been on your mind for a long time. That evening, before you leave her apartment, you've made up your mind. Edna. Yes, darling. When can you get the book? Tomorrow. Do I put the finger on Johnny? Yeah. You put the finger on Johnny. You congratulate yourself as you leave the apartment, don't you, Steve? It's going to be so simple. A killer's bullet will dissolve your partnership with Johnny. And with his book in your hand, the only link connecting you with a racket. You think you'll find a way to be free of Edna, too. You know she'll go to the police and tell them of your connection with Johnny, but without the book, she'll have no proof. They'll laugh at her. The following day, you wait anxiously for some word from Edna, but nothing comes. And then early that evening... Hello? Steve, I want to see you right away. Something wrong, Johnny? Suppose you get over here and we'll talk about it, huh? Oh, sure, but I... Johnny! Come on in. In here. Hello, Edna. Hello. Well, what's the trouble, Johnny? Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, sure. Well... It's the guy Sid got for the Tolman alibi. He's falling apart at the seams. Oh. Oh, I see. Something went wrong. The cops have him downtown now, and they're putting the screws on him. I don't know how long he's going to hold out. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, yeah. So we got to think of something. You are the brains. You think of something. Come on, come on. Well, give me time, will we you? We ain't got time. If that guy squawks, the cops will be all over town looking for me. I got I to gotta know now. Do we stay here or do I run? Well? Johnny, the phone you want me to... No, no, baby, I'll get it. Probably Sid. Keep thinking, Steve. I'll be right back. Yeah, that was close. I thought he was on to us. He isn't. Stop worrying. What are you going to tell him to do? Well, it depends. What about the little man with the itchy finger? Didn't you see him when you came in? He followed me here. He's right across the street, waiting. Okay, we won't take any chances. I'll tell Johnny to run for it. The minute he steps out, he... Okay. The, uh, the book, Edna. You got it? Uh Uh-huh. It's... It's in a safe place, darling. Uh, I... What are we going to do, Steve? Well, Steve, you ready with some advice? Yeah. Uh, You uh, run. I run. (laughs) What's so funny? (laughs) Relax, Steve, relax. That was Sid. (laughs) He just got word the cops let my alibi go. (laughs) The guy who alibied me didn't spill a word. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that's that's good, Johnny, good. Yeah, so we can all relax, huh? Little Johnny stays right here. Edna, get a bottle of beer for the counselor. No, no, uh, skip it, Edna. I'll be running along. Well, you just got here. I got a big day tomorrow. I think I'll run along, too, Johnny. It's late. I'm sort sort of tired. Huh? Okay, everybody's scramming, huh? Okay, I'll... See you tomorrow, huh, baby? Sure, Johnny. And look, honey, be careful. Don't let anybody follow you. I'll be careful, Johnny. Steve, see him across the street? Yeah, that our boy with the itchy finger? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, go on, I'll get in. Yeah. Notice he's got a good view of both the front and side entrance of the apartment house. Yeah. Uh, He's not going to do us any good, as long as Johnny stays inside. Edna? Yes, darling? About the book. It's in a safe place, Steve. Don't worry. I I want it. You'll get it. Tonight? Mm, No. Well, what's the idea? The idea is, little Edna's been thinking it over. Maybe I'll hold on to it for a while. What for? Girl can't be too careful these days, darling. Suppose, once you've got your hands on that book, 
You walked out on me. Why, that's crazy. Is it? Kiss me, Steve. What? I said, kiss me. Hmm. Nice. Very nice, but, well... But what? Well, it just doesn't seem the same. Not like it used to be, darling. A woman has a way of noticing those things. And lately, Steve, I've been noticing. Now, look, Edna, you're all wrong. Maybe I... I am. Maybe you can convince me. Let's wait and see, huh? She suspects, doesn't she, Stevie? That your only concern now is getting the little black book. Once it's in your hands, you'll be free of any connection with Johnny and the racket, and you hope of Edna, too. You realize you're going to have to proceed cautiously. Do your best to convince her she's wrong. And later that evening at her apartment... But it'll work, Steve. I know it will. Sure, but why me, Edna? You'll have to be the one to call Johnny, Steve. He'll run like a frightened okay. rabbit. Okay. Okay, but I have to drive by the apartment and make sure that trigger man is still there. He'll be there, darling. You don't have to rush away right now, do you? Fix me another drink, hmm? <laughs> Yeah, sure, Red. Anything you say. Edna, slow down. Well. Yeah. Yeah, he's still there. Waiting for Johnny. Now all you have to do is phone. Uh, where am I going to find one at this time of the morning? There's an all-night drugstore around the corner. Yeah? Okay. I'll drive on out to West Beach tonight, Steve. You'll come down in the morning? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Will that uh, give you enough time to think it over? That I'm on the level with you? Still worrying about the little black book, huh? <laughs> I'll think it over. Seriously. Well, there's your drugstore. Sure you can get back home okay? Yeah, I'll grab a cab up in the avenue. Night, Red. Night, darling. Oh, that's better. So much better. Sure, sure, I know it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but I had to phone you. I couldn't wait. Oh. What's up? Uh, that, that alibi of yours, Johnny. Let him go, didn't they? Yeah, sure. And he didn't spill a word. It's a smoke screen, I tell you. I just found out he did talk loud and long. What? Yeah. And right now the cops are ripping this town wide open looking for you. You better get out and fast. <sighs> okay. Now, look. Look, get over to my place. My car is parked in front. And the keys will be in it. When you get out of town, you better leave it and switch to something else. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. I won't forget this. Oh, that's all right. Glad to do it, Johnny. You leave the drugstore, hurry down the street towards Johnny's apartment house, and arrive just in time to see Johnny step out the front door and turn into the alley. Then a figure slips out of the shadows, crosses the street, and darts into the alley after Johnny. Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. What I have to say now is especially for those of you who have smooth tires or tires on which the pattern in the tread is almost gone. You've realized for quite some time that your tires are getting unsafe. They don't stop as quickly and they're apt to puncture more easily and more often. But you've been putting off buying new tires because you hope to get another 1,000 or maybe 2,000 miles out of your old tires. Well, right now, the chances are that unused mileage in your tires is actually worth more to someone else than it is to you. And that someone else is your signal dealer. You see, signal dealers are now giving such big allowances for old tires that in most cases they'll pay you more per mile for the unused mileage in your smooth tires than you pay for safe, carefree mileage in new first-line Lee tires. 
And today's Lee tires, made of cold rubber, toughened, toughened with patented Phil Black O, actually wear 30 to 40% longer than ever before. So any way you look at it, you'll be ahead by taking the big allowance that signal dealers want to give for your old tires now. Stop at your nearest signal station. Get the facts and figures, and you'll know what I mean. It's done, isn't it, Steve? You're certain Johnny is dead, shot down in a dark alley by a rival gunman. Now there's only Edna to worry about, and the little black book containing the complete record of your activities as the front for Johnny's racket. It's the only link between you and Johnny in the racket, isn't it? And once it's destroyed, you'll be free. And getting the black book from Edna isn't going to be a difficult task. You're thinking about that as you return to your apartment. Fix yourself a drink, and then... Hello, Stevie. Johnny. Let me in. Let me in. Johnny, what happened? They messed me up pretty hard. One of Tolman's torpedoes. Waiting for me in the alley. But I got him, too. Let me, let me sit down. Yeah, sure. Sure, but I, I... Thanks. Thanks for the offer. The car. But I ain't gonna make it. I had to tip you we'd been double-crossed. You double-crossed? She did it, Steve. Edna. She tipped that trigger man. And the black book. It's gone. She must have taken it. She's gonna take over with some other guy. And use you. Yeah, no, you're wrong, Johnny. Edna would Look, I know. She's been meeting some guy out at West Beach. Sid found out. She's probably on her way to him now. Hey, wait a minute. Johnny, put that gun down. I never thought of it before. You've been going to West Beach a lot. Are you crazy? I've always been on the level with you. Sure. Oh, sure, I must be nuts to think you'd cross me. You're a good guy. Find out who that is. Yeah. Who's there? It's me, darling. Edna. I've changed my mind about keeping the black book. Edna, no! Edna. The book's yours. You win, Steve. I have it with me now. The book. That sort of clears up everything, doesn't it, pal? No. Johnny, wait! All nice and clear. <laughs> Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman, Francis Robinson, and Wally Mayer. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Gil Thomas, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>